Hello everyone. So we want to solve this particular equation today. It's n square plus n plus 1 raised to the power 4 equals to 5 times n plus 2 whole cube. Now at the first glance this might look like a biquadratic which it is but we will not solve it using normal theory of equation techniques. Instead of that we will be using a little bit of number theory here. Here we are only looking for natural number solutions. Natural number solutions. Uh, so now how do we use number theory to solve an equation? Let's see how we can do that. The first thing is we will show that no numbers of the form 0, 1 mod 3 or 2 mod 3 will work. So step one and you can pause the video here and give it a try show that numbers of the form 1 mod 3 and the and numbers of the form 2 mod 3 cannot be solutions to this equation and it's very easy actually uh, let me show you how let me change the color here to green maybe uh, suppose we were we want to know whether the numbers of the form 1 mod 3 works so we can directly plug it in here. So this will be one, this will be, con the left hand side will be congruent to one square plus one plus one raised to four modulo three. Now if you don't know modular arithmetic, uh, this will be a very nice place to pick it up. A very good book for modular arithmetic will be David Burton's Elementary Number Theory. It's really very easy. Um, it was discovered by one of the greatest mathematicians of all times, Gauss. I love modular arithmetic. There is a very nice geometric interpretation of modular arithmetic as well. And we discuss the notion at length in our number theory modules for Math Olympiad. Anyway, so coming back to this um, congruence, the left hand side becomes 1 plus 2 to the power 4 modulo 3 which basically means 17 mod 3. Now 17 mod 3 is simply 2 mod 3. So at every step we are basically dividing by 3 and looking at the remainder. So that's what the left hand side is, the left hand side, which is this quantity. Now what happens to the right hand side? if we take uh, n is congruent to 1 mod 3. What happens to the right hand side? So the right hand side, let me write it here. The right hand side is 5 times n plus 2 raised to 3. Here we're taking n equals to 1 mod 3. That's the case. n equals to 1 mod 3 or n is congruent to 1 mod 3. That's the, that's the case we are in. So let's plug in that. Uh, we have this is congruent to 5 times 1 plus 2 raised to 3 which is congruent to 0 mod 3 right because this is this part is divisible by 3 of course 3 is divisible by 3 so one nice thing about uh, modular arithmetic is that it works really well with exponentiation so you can just plug it plug in the value of the modular and it all works out there is a very nice geometric interpretation of this idea. I will put a link in the description for that. We have a video of a uh, YouTube video for that as well. It's very important to have a both number theoretic and geometric intuition about what's going on here. Okay, so what happened here is this, that the right hand side turned out to be zero mod three. The right hand side turned out to be zero mod three. And the left hand side turned out to be, as we have here, the left hand side turned out to be 2 mod 3. 2 mod 3. So this cannot happen, of course. The right hand side and the left hand side must give same remainders when divided by 3. This happens, this happens when we plug in n congruent to 1 mod 3 in the given equation. So no numbers of the form 3m plus 1 can be a solution to this particular equation. 
all the numbers, if a number is 1 mod 3, what that essentially means is, if you divide the number by 3, the remainder will be 1. Okay. The next part is that we will show that no numbers of the form 2 mod 3 will also work. This is quite interesting. So we want to show that numbers of the form 2 mod 3, which are basically 3m plus 2, this is the form of the number. You divide the number by 3, the remainder is 2. No numbers of the form 2 mod 3 will work. How do we show? Well, we again look at LHS. So LHS was, uh, let me get back to this. This was the left hand side, this n square plus n plus 1 raised to 4. So let's use that n square plus n plus 1 raised to 4. We are in the case 2 mod 3, n is congruent to 2 mod 3. So we will just plug in that. So let's do that. So this is congruent to 2 square plus 2 plus 1 raised to 4 mod 3. So this is 0. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is 0 mod 3. 3 gives remainder 0 when divided by 3. So this part is 0 mod 3. And this is 4. So this is 1 mod 3. Great. So we have this. The left hand side is 1 mod 3 then. And what happens to the right hand side? The right hand side is 5 times n plus 2 raised to 3. Right? Okay, so we are in the case n is congruent to 2 mod 3. Let's plug in that. This is congruent to 5 times 2 plus 2 raised to 3. 2 plus 2 raised to 3. This is congruent to 5 times 4 raised to 3. This is congruent to, so this 4 raised to 3. 4 is congruent to 1 mod 3. So 4 raised to 3, 4 raised to 3 is congruent to uh, 1 mod 3. No problem. So we can just get rid of this. So 5 times 1 and 5 itself is congruent to 2 mod 3. So we see that the right hand side is 2 mod 3 and the left hand side is 1 mod 3. Again, we get a contradiction. Excellent. So in this first step, we dealt with 1 mod 3 and 2 mod 3 numbers of this form. So what does this actually mean? This means that if I look at all the numbers which are of the form 1 mod 3, so all natural numbers uh, which are 3m plus 1 form will not work. If I plug in those things, they will not, the left hand side will not be the right, equal to the right hand side. So what are these numbers? Okay, 4 is one example, 7, 10, all of these numbers they give remainder 1 when divided by 3. None of them can be a solution to this equation. Why? Because all the numbers of the form 3m plus 1 or 1 mod 3 numbers have this problem that if I plug in, plug it, plug that number into this equation, the remainder that the left hand side gives and the remainder that the right hand side gives are unequal. Similarly, if I take the numbers of the form 3m plus 2, I'll face the same problem. So we are left with the numbers which are multiples of 3 or the 0 mod 3 numbers. 0 mod 3 numbers. Okay, so now see this part of the problem is quite interesting. That if you plug in a 0 mod 3 number or a multiple of 3 in this particular equation, n square plus n plus 1 raised to 4 equals to 5 times n plus 2 raised to 3. If you plug in this particular um, value that is 0 mod 3 in place of n, you will not find a contradiction. You will not find that the left hand side and the right hand side are giving different remainders. So our method of congruency does not give us any information in this particular step. I'll give you uh, a demonstration what I'm talking about. Let's, let me use white here. So 0 square, so I'm plugging in 0 mod 3. 0 plus 1 raised to 4 is congruent to 5 times 0 plus 2 raised to 3 
So this is obviously true because the left hand side is 1 modulo 3 and the right hand side is 5 times 8 which is 40 which is again 1 mod 3. So the, both the left hand side and the right hand side gives up remainder 1 when divided by 3. So congruency does not give us a solution here. But this does not mean that there is a solution. Why? Because there are, I mean, the left hand side and the right hand side could be completely different numbers, still giving up 1 as the remainder when divided by 3. For example, left hand side could be 7 and the right hand side could be 31. All this test of congruence says that the left hand side and the right hand side gives me same remainder when divided by 3. So there is a, that it doesn't tell us that there is a solution. It's just that we cannot use this test to prove that there isn't a solution. Okay. All right. Great. So how do we proceed then? Well, we have, a, we have to look at this particular equation in a different way. I love this type of problems because it, it, it sort of provokes us to see this thing in a different way. Uh, so how do you look at this problem? Well, I'll give you a hint. And in the next part of the video, I will finish up the solution. But I'll give you a hint. If you can do this, you can put the uh, comment in the description with your solution. So what is the hint? Well, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. It has to be if there is a solution. Which basically means that n plus 1 raised to 4 is less than n plus 2 raised to 3. Five times that. So, why is this true? Because I just omitted n square from the left hand side. If I omit something from the left hand side, which was positive, n square is positive, then whatever remains on the left hand side must be less than the right hand side because LHS and RHS were equal initially. I throw, threw away some stuff from the left hand side, provided n is not zero. And zero will not work, you can just check. Zero doesn't work. So n is definitely greater than zero. So if I omit n square from the left hand side, whatever is left on the left hand side must be less than the right hand side, right? Why am I doing this? Because this is a very common technique in number theory and in inequality. You often prove two things are not equal, but sh by showing that one of the things must be larger than the other. And here my intuition is that since this has a fourth power and this since this is a third power, eventually, I mean, I understand that this is n plus one and this is n plus two, but eventually since the exponent is larger, the left hand side will be larger than the right hand side eventually this is a more of an intuition and you can we have to obviously make it more concrete but this intuition often proves very useful so now use this inequality to sort of find out that uh, there is no other solution to this particular equation because not for very many natural numbers the left hand side a fourth power will be less than the right hand side the third power and uh, you can test out those few values for which this happens. And give it a try, put a comment in the description and I'll see you in the next video and finish off this uh, problem. Thank you.